episode 229. 229, 229. What's the time? What's the time for 229? Miles' wife is there. She's no happy. Giving him orders, telling him what to do. But he's got some cookies to keep him happy because that's how she controls him with food and sex and foot jobs and toes. And he's got a wee fan because it's trans day. It's Pride. It's Pride summer. Pride month. It was Pride month. But now the Pride people have gone, hey, a month is day enough to be proud. It's, just, it's now the Pride. It's the summer of Pride, Mal. Are you aware of this? We're now in the summer no, they're not happy with just a week or a month. They just want no, it to be Pride. No. Friday, no, it's every the summer, day. aye, because we've consumed everything else, and they're like, listen, there's money to be made in the pink pounds, man. Do you see all these folk? <laughs> what a lot of money they've got. So it's, it's the summer of pride, Mal. We have to be, pride, we have to be proud for our summer. Well, and listen, then, I, I would just like to say that uh, all winter. my events from now on are all about the pride. So it's a big pound, it's a big dollar. Come big, along to the big dollar. Come along to wherever I play, and I will play... Uh, you know, my stuff is gay and uplifting anyway, so get in about it. I uh, I remember a long time ago being backstage at a gig and a very, very, very famous comedian saying to another famous comedian who... That ultrasonic's if, amazing. Who, who also had, you know, a very different public persona to what their uh, uh, person was like off stage and they said to this person look at you you've made it and he went what do you mean and he said you've got the poofs and the huns turning up and that's when you know you've made it and I'm telling you if that guy had actually said that in public his career you know would have been shattered but hey behind the scenes he can act however he wants but what, you know, hey, what a fucking what, what a great, he was what a great seal of approval exactly you've got the poof and the huns again exactly you. So hey, I apologize. I'd like to think you've got the poofs and the huns on our side. Oh, 100%. Uh, is your missus getting her tits out off camera or something? Because your eyes are wandering. What's happening here? I've just I've just actually woke up. I'm looking at my wee wrinkled fucking fat face. My glasses are ski with. I, no, I she's, know you. She's gave me a cup of tea, my phone. Hey, uh, what's going and on? Cookies while, while you were doing your wee jingle. Hey, what's mate? going on? She yeah, never does this. She never does this. What's happening? I turned a corner. I turned a corner. Things are going on with no. my DIY. They're getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting excited. Um, but I want to talk to you about some of the good TV I've been watching in the last couple of days, man. Good, because, Mal, I need some good TV, because I'm telling you right now, I'm coming in here hot. I'm, my anger level's at 100. I'm fired up this morning. All right, right. Well, let I'm me calm you right down with some boring talk shit to chat. Me. Talk to me. Also, I want you, don't forget, because mm -hmm. we put it to the we put it to the listeners, mm -hmm. and there's a celebrity square goal we could divulge it in the hero Patreon section. Is Which this is Mus Musket and Zuck? Fron, Musket and the Zuck Zuck and Fucker. Aye. Which I think would be a belter. Which, um, if we remember, we'll, we'll, we'll get down and dirty with that. But right, I, I, you know what? Um, sticking, sticking, with the, sticking with the journey ferrets, right? I watched the Wham documentary on Netflix. You watched it? I am so glad you brought it up because that was the thing that kick-started the anger, mate. It oh, kick-started the anger. I really enjoyed it, but how many uh, knew he was a birthday right for the fucking first right. syllable he sang? Let me tell you, let me tell you, <laughs> that's why the same people who didn't know that George Michael was gay are the same people who didn't know Jimmy Savile was a pedo. The exact same pedo. The, the exact same people. The, the exact same people. As soon as you saw Savile, you're like, what the fuck is that? And as soon as you see George Michael, you go, that's a homosexual man. No, let me just say, nothing wrong with being gay. And also, George Michael, old school gay. <laughs> I think you're going to say, let me just say now, nothing wrong with being a pifido. So, old, old school gay. smoking pifido. Old school gay came through difficult times. Of course. You know, his father no, was a battered no, seven no, lumps I, of shit. out I, I, I old fucking Greek. I, 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 no, no son of mine. I, I, I said my son. I said, <laughs> listen, Yog. <laughs> I said, yeah, my son, you have to be a doctor, a counter. All this music, stop the music. He banned him for buying records or playing his hi fi. Aye, old school. He's just like, listen, <laughs> get your sister's dress off. Get out, get uh, become a doctor, come back and uh, make me your mother proud. I tell you what, Yog, you're very that shit necessary. But old <laughs> school, you, again, what I didn't like about it is because somebody one, said to you, check that suit's got. <laughs> Stay away, you're like, how did you fucking recommend TV to me? <laughs> See, also, if you're, you're in a band with your mate, right, and uh, he's suddenly singing songs about like you just being in love with guys and you and you still think he's straight. You are no, that. you all come out to Andrew. You know what? I came away having a wee bit more respect for Andrew uh, Ridgelet. How? How? 
because how how how, how? again you know before i drifted off to sleep I, I just uttered some of my 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 thinkings to maria who is clearly not interested and was probably sound asleep i was thinking to myself see in every creative's journey here we go here we go you need and rely on certain individuals run about you that inspire you and encourage you and if you don't have them mm -hmm. and you'll know this is about your own career if you don't have the people run about you it's almost kind of like you don't um you don't uh, achieve the next level and he needed the big big andy regular he the, he yog needed him to pull him out his insecurities for a young schoolboy, mm -hmm. and he was very much the ringleader let's start a band don't listen to your dad we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And, and he was a driving force mm -hmm. that actually opened the door for, for George Michael to say, look, this is what we could be doing. Uh -huh. you know, in a child fantasy. But that what that did was develop a Choose. hidden talent that the world would never have heard. Choose your and, words wisely. And lyrically. Don't say a child's fantasy. Whether the, whether the two of them are, are hiding fucking meat sausages together, well, whether that's going well, on or no, right? Hey, hey, hey. The, the lyrical content of George Michael's songs, and that was me apparent when I was, I, I, I watch things now with the subtitles on, um, and the lyrical content of some of Wham records are so fucking profoundly moving for like, a teenage kid to write. I, if I mean, they were inserted know... into a rock band or a fucking emo band, they'd be hailed as fucking the most significant lyrics of the 1980s. But mate, again, it's oh, like when, it's like the bit of documentary when he's saying when he wrote Careless Whisper when he was like fucking 18, 19 or something, right? Younger even that. that blew my mind. And I'm going, and he's sitting and you hear George Michael's voice saying, I just know that whether it's this year, next year, whenever, 10, I just know this is going to be a number one hit. And like you're saying, mate, the content of fucking the, the lyrics of Wham's music, obviously know the fucking Wham rap, right? That's just no, too no, messed no, about, right? But, that, I mean, was the song... comment, that was social commentary about being on the, bro the brew. No, it wasn't. That was just a shite rap he's put together. I'm <laughs> out. Come on, my baby, I don't care who you are. <laughs> right. <laughs> if <laughs> you sign on the brew, you can get in my radio. Come on, baby. <laughs> it's clear. So... My point being that Wham is George Michael. Because no, when George... No, that's, that, let that's, me fucking okay, sorry, sorry. finish! I bet you I should win his lot. Talking about George Michael. Mate, that... that <laughs> 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 For the uh, audio viewers only, Mal is holding up a, a little chocolate donut uh, called in chocolate, and he's now <laughs> tonguing the hole. Of the again for for all this high end content, uh, you know, social commentary, uh, become a patron, patreon.com forward slash the hashtag show. The point you Big make about yoga, that's what happens when you have to have a night with me. <laughs> the point that you make about fucking Wrigley, uh, George Michael needed Andrew Wrigley at the start, it was Muse, right? Much to, more than a Muse, sorry, to give him. I suppose give him the confidence that he needed to start a band, right? Because also you can't start the direction, a direction, Scott. The direction as well. You can't start a band on your own, right? But Andrew Rigglesbum, I think, clearly knew what he had when he was with George Michael at the start. He clearly no. knew what he had. Hey, mate, he no knew chance. the talent of George Michael. He fucking knew it. No, I never. If you are sitting across from him, even that when they play that first demo tape and you listen to the voice, you're going, holy fucking shit. Even if you have got the worst songs in the world, this guy's voice is unreal. As it goes on, he Andrew regularly realised that if once George Michael becomes George Michael, he's fucked because he's got nothing. But I tell you why he's got nothing, Mal, because he's a fucking rich, middle-class North London cunt who doesn't have nothing. It doesn't matter if he fails because you'll well, fall back on the fucking well for the definitely... monitor. They were I'll definitely wealthy middle class because they're jumping into swimming pools at summer and all that. Serious wealth, mate. North London on that. It, even when I was saying to Lauren, it started, he's gone, they had that music producer at Cutler's Doors doing it. I'm like, you don't live a Cutler's Doors doing for a music producer in London in the 90s if your mom right. does not got a bit of dough. I, I just don't like it when 
see when you have people in a bar. It was near, it was near Ian I know, but see, the only reason I don't, I didn't like it right for the start was I hate it when see especially when successful. it's see especially when it's bands, more specifically bands because, like you know yourself, that is the most collaborative thing that you can do. I think in, in, in any form of art is be in a band together because gone of the day, it's not like it's fucking manufactured S Club 7 or the fucking, what's the one with Nicole shirt slinger in it where she was like uh, singing the rest were dancers, right? I mean, those. I mean, you're in a band, one he sings, one he does the music, one he's, do you mean, the, the, the process of that must be so intense. So what I hate is when one of the members of the band is dead and you've got their voiceover from history and then the cunt that's still alive going, no, I'll tell you what actually happened. That fucking boils my piss because, no, that isn't what happened. That's your take on it, cunt. And you're basically putting words into a guy who can't come back. Because remember right at the start of it, it was going, George Michael's obviously voiceover from when he was a young man saying, like, well, we're doing this, we're doing that, and then it cuts to Andrew fucking fuck nugget, and he's going, no, that isn't right. And you're going, you don't, you don't get to put words no, in, in, in the fucking what... mouth of the dead. The mouth, the, the, dead, the mouth of the dead, Andrew. That's what the documentary should be called. Wham! The mouth Aye, of the mouth. dead. You don't get to speak for the dead, Andrew. But no, what, I get what, what you're coming from. What have you done since Wham? What have you done since Wham? Fuck all. I don't, I Fuck don't think, all. I don't think anything that he said was uh, derogatory at all. I thought that, if anything, no, I get what you're saying. He's had a chance to reply to the things. But I, I, I'd like to look into that because I don't, I don't think there was anything that he said that was like beefing up Andrew Ridgelet. You know, he was I, going, I, well, I actually, he was quite honest going, you know, I was no longer a musical collaborator. I was no longer a songwriter. I was no longer a producer. You know, in a very, very uh, sketchy way, I actually want to know, I would love to hear what he actually contributed to live because he jumped about that wee guitar. Other than going, fuck off. Nothing, there's nothing coming out of his guitar. But mate, that's it, my point, but, right? See, but but my he, point he is, is he is the fucking ringmaster. He done the merry dance and he created that monster. But do you know why, Mal? Because, because it was his fucking no, because it was his mom and dad paying the fucking bill. That's why it was fucking Andrew Riggles coming for a position no, of wealth. He I was the one driving no. it. It's his fucking bus. I'm driving the bus, Yog. And you get it. Stop calling me Yog. Yog's your name, cunt. And see when you're dead for fucking tenure, I'm going to do a documentary and I'm going to tell every cunt that your name was Yog. But they all cry, Yog. Fuck they up. All... Get in the bus. For a start, they can't even pronounce his name. But listen, George, George. It's even his, George. Uh, his cousins and his brother and all that call him Yog. His it's no the best nickname, to be fair. Daddy. His dad doesn't call him Yog. It's better than. Uh, do I know his dad calls him? Pink Star Chaser or something like that. You know, I don't know. Anyway, I thought it was honestly. Hey, right, let's go. Let's get a new thing. That's what it tends to I thought I'm I'm going to give it a fucking solid eight. I I would give it an eight as well. But I'm, I'm going to say this and, and, and wrap it up. My final point: If George Michael, when he left Wham, had gone into a completely different genre of music, if he had left Wham and become like a fucking rap artist or oh, te not going to techno, right? Then I would say, do you know what? That is a progression of an artist who no, was no. in a... Listen to me, you fucking cunt! No! That was a man who was in a band that didn't suit him, and he's now doing his own music. George Michael took Wham! and then became George Michael with the same lyrical content, the same deep songwriting, the same masterful music. George Michael was Wham! Andrew Riggler paid the bill and got fucking Pepsi Cola to and suck him off. He's a cunt. George Michael's a god. It's Pride season. It's the summer of Pride. Let's all get there and fucking support the Yogster. Yogi, Yogi, ah, fucking. I, I agree with Andrew everything Riggles. you said there up till the end. But... Lying, cunt. Fuck Andrew Riggles. Fuck him. What fuck clearly him. became fuck a client. Clearly became Wham. a client. Um, what clearly became apparent. apparent is that Wham, Wham. was a vehicle for his songwriting, Correct. producing, Correct. performing Correct. capabilities. Correct. And he quite quickly. Outgrew Wham because Correct. he's like the Andy seriously. What the fuck you doing with that guitar and oh, dancing about and back me up? Exactly. Fight. Exactly. So uh, you're, you're, you are agreeing with my point. You're 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 you're, you're no. saying what I'm saying. But that was that was George Michael's first stepping stone in his career. Yes, George greatness. Michael. Yes. As George Michael, and that's what I was saying to him at the very start. Everybody, even yourself, myself, you have people run about you. 
you, you can either be horrible about it and treat people like a stepping stone, or you can be honest about it and it's either failed relationships within work or even actual personal relationships with people helping you and believing in you that get you to the next level that are only going to be way to the end. And it must be fantastic if you start out on something and you're with that person to the very end. But I think it's ve it's a seldom... Let, let's say Conor McGregor, for instance. He said the same bird right up to now. He's pumping other things and all that as well. Slightly I know, different. I know slight, that's only thing that came into my head. She was paying the bills for years, so now it it's a, her chance to get I, It would be amazing um, to, to to see somebody on a journey well, with somebody right you know through. But I don't think I'll, it happens I'll a lot because you, you need people. I'll give you an example there, right? So Laura's just been to see Motley Crue twice this week, right? Twice? Well, Went to Dublin on Wednesday. No, went to Dublin on Tuesday to see him and then saw him in Glasgow last night. Loves him, right? Wow, that's a fan, man. Loves him. Aye. Gold is that the, is that the country that wrote that book? The nut job, Motley Crue. Like this. The duck. Was it the duck? Aye, I read that. So I saw a thing the other day, right? Obviously because they're, they're in Glasgow. So usual your your Instagram and all that shite starts churning up, right? Cause no, because you were following her. The Matrix controls it, it, right? The Matrix that's controls That's how you're off radar. You were hanging about fucking Motley Crue's. Fucking stage and that. Do you know what? I don't. I, I was going to say something. No, do you know what? My missus is amazing, mate. She is. She's some woman, man. She really. No, is you wouldn't be aware if she wasn't, mate. No, but she's like, she's just, she's brilliant. Anyway, so I was watching this thing about Motley Crue. Came up with <laughs> she wouldn't right? leave me for Tommy Lee. Do you mate? Would she? No, mate. She likes the birds, do you know what I'm saying, my well, man? I'm going to be mate, honest with you, right? Any bird. Having 20 any bird. Tap. Any bird. Aye. Maria, tell me right to my face. Yep. If Brad Pitt asked her out, she would go. And I went, what are you talking about? She went, it's just Brad Pitt. I can't say no. So any bird with any option of celebrity fucking keep running away from you for celebrities, it's going to happen, mate. So get re get used to that. No, it might not be it. Brad Pitt. It might be Tommy Lee. It might no, be something else. If you're a realist, the chap to Don went, listen, see that man of yours? I'm, I don't know if I'm just telling you this, but yep. he looks like a midget for the waist down and a Viking for the waist up. How a midget, but. Power magic, a Viking magic, like, uh, uh, like you let know, he's experimented on that man's <laughs> like, like body Gimli. like Wolverine. The boy at uh, Lord of the Rings, we Gimli. So, listen, <laughs> I'm Tommy Lee, come with me, huh? Boom, so, see you later. See you later, she's left you for dust. So, the, I nice didn't realise that, right, so, as a guy, Nicky Six, is that his name, who's like the lead to it? I don't know but, a fuck me, but... Everybody, everybody's fucked death. So it's a double tour of Def Leppard and Motley Crue. That's the double headliner. That's the tour. Right. And with the video that I saw of Def Leppard, I'm like, they just look like old Glasgow lesbians. Which they probably old are. as fuck. <laughs> but he put up, well, you're talking about. Hey, how do we staying. sell this gig out? Let's pretend we're Glasgow lesbians. We talked about somebody staying together to the end. So the, the film came out. The film was called The Duck, which was about Motley Crue, obviously, in the early days. And that's the, like, with the scene in the film and. Oh, the guy playing Ozzy Osbourne snorts the ants. Uh -huh. So the the thing that I saw was they were Nicky Six has been interviewed, and they they were apparently the film took ages to come out. Like apparently it was filmed, it was made, and it kept being delayed. Usual fucking Hollywood bullshit. Like we've got to find a release date that will suit the fucking. Da -da -da. So they were asking him like, is there going to be, is there going to be a tour? Is there going to be a tour after this? Is the band come back together? And Nicky Six went, this is a standalone thing, it's the movie. He went, but I'll tell you this, if the movie's a success, the very first person I'm going to is Tommy, because to me, it's me and Tommy. And if Tommy says he's interested, then we'll maybe start to talk about a tour. But if Tommy says he doesn't know what to do, it, there's never going to be a tour. And I was mm -hmm. like, well, that's quite nice that, like, the two guys who have been together, you know... Well, they know they couldn't date without each other. Aye, but he's like, well, I'm not dating without him. Because think, think about it, mate, like, how many fucking musicians or whoever would go at do you want to do this no right cool we're doing it anyway fuckies and they're off do you know what I mean uh, they, it's cut throat they just put a especially somebody who just who not just played but who's somebody who plays in the band like think it's, how many... it's, it's fucking happened to me in my career we just replace you with Joe Deacon uh, no I, I'm through I'm, I'm through a, a big four anyway that's another thing oh you know, you, it was it was you it almost, was hard you almost opened relate. up to me there. You almost I mean, opened up I, to me. I there. know, you know, I know I come across as cheeky mal, right? But you know, I've actually had a career outside this podcast uh, in music, and uh, you know, I can. Uh, I've got some social commentary on what's actually gone down, and uh, I've toured with Motley Crue. But that's what, that's what. Uh, <laughs> what happened was he sat me in the studio, right? Then the other, the other two guys in the band were like, listen to it. 
our bird says we've not hanging about you anymore because you're you're a bad boy, and that's how I got flung out of the band. That was no, it. it's terrible, man. But Call I did, I did think that was you quite could nice. Take this all the way down to the boys, you're out. No, <laughs> I, I did went, think that oh, was quite oh, nice. Boys. When he said like, unless Tommy's interested, I'm not taking any further. And I thought, you know what? That's, that's brotherhood. See that but right also, there, Mal? That's in those. Probably Nicky Six or whatever his name is, and Tommy Motley or whatever his name is. They're Tommy probably Crew. only two real members left. Aye, Tommy Crew and Nicky Motley, that's the band. Oh, right. And and continuing on for your fucking rock bands and documentaries. Yes. Tell me, you've watched the STV documentary about fucking uh, Bass City Rollers? It, mate, right. First of all, you lost me at STV. I, I, I know. Absolutely not. Bass, a documentary about Bass City Rollers. Bye bye, baby, baby, bye bye. Pure seventies, the Tartan Rockers, the original hey, boy band. I know band. who the base set of those are. They're the what fucking Scottish. Oh, the they're, the, they're the Scottish Wuzzles. The the Scottish take loan. <laughs> Mate, they're the Scottish Wuzzles. That's who the base set of those are. Mate, I seen a clip. I've got a brand new combine over, sir. I'll give you <laughs> much more hits in the fucking Wuzzles. <laughs> I got the fucking cider drink pussies. He's got twenty three. Imagine that in a fight. There's a celebrity death match tag team: the Wuzzles versus fucking base set of those. I know. What are you saying, eh? No, that. Hey, you're up, are you? Are you fucking out, man? Are you right? B A Y B A Y B A Y C I T Y with an R O double L E R S. Bass it all us are the best. Wow, <laughs> you've you've got a, a, a fucking fan in there and inside you. B-A-Y. Never heard that one before. Tell tell me. Let me tell you, hey, let me tell you about fucking bass it all us, man. Hey, let me tell you. Hey. So the boy Les McCune, uh-huh. who I've actually met back in the day, man. Fucking. Sucked him off backstage he, for a number singer? one techno album. No, no, no Les McCune. Tam Payton. Sorry, it's who I met. I actually have met Les McCune and all at some radio fucking thing. Anyway, um, Tam Payton was their manager. Yep. Ex military. See where this is going. Right. Put the band together, manage them, put them under a tight leash, tell them don't Aye. tell anybody you've got girlfriends, need girlfriends in the band. Aye. They're here to sell records to teenagers. Aye. Scottish hers, eh? He was taking one and rotating them to see who was sharing a room with him. The guys, were, he was pumping were, the guys. The band. He was going no. to fucking. He was going to like they were doing today radio ones and that, and he was going. See, unless you sleep with that, one of you have to sleep with this radio DJ, and we'll get this radio place radio one DJs. The, the men who went, the boys in the band were fucking fuck puppets. Hold on, they, hold they, on, hold they, on, hold on. They were basically getting the manager trafficked. Was, was trafficking their sexuality. The male members are basically roles to sleep with other men. Uh-huh. How, how is Another this though? Another man. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? The right boss? Bags. Another gay man. <laughs> oh, one day settles down with another gay man. Who's the Radio 1 DJ then? How is this no, like, the, well, how is this is no global the, news? The Radio 1 DJ got to jail and, and subsequently is dead now. And then I was thinking to myself, you know what? See, honestly, BBC, it should be brought down and shut down for the oh, fucking mate. atrocities it's done, fucking... man. And the bullshit that it continues to peddle, it should of actually course. be shut down. Jink, because you gave fucking great footage of Glastonbury Festival, we're going to forgive the tainted past that we've not even scraped the surface on that that company is responsible for. Mate, if you think, I'm telling you something else, no, Glastonbury's done as well. I, I think that's it finished. I, I never watched year. any highlights other than fucking I've seen a clip of Rick Astley doing a, a Smith's garbage. cover band. Utter fucking garbage. <clears throat> Um, oh, mate, some Guns and Roses screaming! Get the real. BBC to fuck, fuck a lot of them. I the was kind of that's what, an utter pile of shite. See, when I was watching that documentary, yep. And it there's, so there's only one. There's there was two kind of remaining guys left, right? Mm-hmm. There was, I don't know if you I can vaguely remember them as well. There was one called Woody, who's still kicking about, and he's doing like the Bay City Rollers tribute acts, still right. gigging after the back of the name, right? The only surviving member. Yeah. Then there's another boy who's like fucked a, on the drink and drugs. Like ultra And he's, he's just telling, he's telling the guy, he's telling the guy the fucking down low what was going on. Right. You know, and he's saying it's fucked me up. I can't, I just, look, it's took me years to get on, on in my life. The Woody guy's in denial. Like, oh, he was some, Tom Payton, he was some character. Like, no talking about anything. And the other guy's going, this is fucking how it is. The Les McCune guy, who's a singer, Mm-hmm. I knew he was fighting the management to try and get royalties because that Tam Payton guy ripped him off mm-hmm. as a no pine him. But uh, it showed you he'd done some fucking mad interview 
and his wife and his boy was there, and he just fucking broke down and tell them for the first time that he'd been fucking abused. Jesus Christ. And and I tell you what, it was fucking heartbreaking. And the the first fucking thing that came to my mind was because they were saying they were going down to like parties, BBC parties, like top of the pops and that, and they were being told, if you sleep with this DJ, mm -hmm. you will get X amount of radio plays and you'll get higher chaps. Oh, that's kind of shit, right? Yep. And I'm going, see the BBC, honestly, it should fucking, it should be shut down because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's an iceberg, isn't it? We the, we, the public, have heard all these wee horror stories. Savile, Rolf Harris, fucking the babysitting rollers, all the, all the shit that goes on. Imagine the shit that's going on that we don't even know about, even in this fucking day. Mate, listen, you're, you're, you're preaching the wrong person here. I've, I've, for years, I think the BBC should be disbanded. I think anybody who pays a TV licence, I think you should have to walk about with a badge saying, I am a fanny. I wouldn't give him a fucking penny. It's I, fucking I, I, ridiculous, man. Do you think the, the stuff that, you, that we know of is probably the stuff that's been allowed to come out? You think of the stuff we don't know about? And, and even the historical stuff that's grown at BBC as well, you're telling me they don't have fucking connections with like Epstein and everything else. Of course they do. Oh, All mate, these people. 100%. But what's, what what annoys me the most about it is we all know some of the stuff that's going on at the BBC that's been allowed to go on for years, decades, but yet they still come out with the fucking leftist propaganda and, and dictate to us and fucking have a go at the public as to what we can watch, what we can't watch, what we can say, what we can't say. It's utter fucking nonsense, this box-ticking bullshit fucking stuff that goes on at the BBC. And then we're in a situation where... We've just had the uh, Fourth of July, right? American Independence Day. Yeehaw! And that guy, I thought it was Mel Gibson's film, but he's just a producer in it. So this this four oh, part documentary, Search of Freedom or something. That's called, Is that the guy who played uh, Jesus Christ in the Last Temptation aye. of Christ? Uh. Do you know what's interesting as well, mate? I saw an interview with him, right? And Mel Gibson says to him when the phone he went, he's he's been interviewed. The guy who played Jesus, I can't remember his name, right? So let's call him Jesus. Uh, well, his initials are JC. So he does right. say that to Mel on the phone. He goes, he says, um, I've just realised that my initials are JC and I'm 33 years of age, which is the age that he was going to play Jesus when he died. And Mel Gibson goes like to him, you're freaking me out, and hung the phone up. But Mel Gibson's trying to get him to commit to the part. You're freaking me out. And he's telling him about the film and everything, and the guy just kind of clicks him, you want me to play Jesus, don't you? He went, I do. And then Mel Gibson says to him, but if you play this part... You need to suck this right to the boss. Your career's over in Hollywood. He went, I'm telling you this right now. And the guy goes, what do you mean? He went, I'm, he says, the way that this will be received and because the way that I'm being received, if you play this role, your career as an actor in Hollywood is over. That's up to you. And he's getting this whole, like, it's your cross to bear. Sometimes we got a calling in life. It's up to you if you want to do it. But I'm telling you right now, just so you know, having cards on the table, if you play this role, your career's over. And of course, he plays the role and his career's over. And now he's became like a producer and he's, went full balls deep into this film or this documentary series about child sex trafficking and these are the things when it's hard not to think you are in a matrix and there is a conspiracy there's no fucking global release for it it's no spoke about in any the bbc are they only talking about it there's, there's no coverage of it whatsoever i don't even know where i can get to see this film because i, I need to see it because it sounds like it's horrendous one of the things apart that's come up in it do you remember the uh remember that fucking Suez Canal? In Egypt, mm -hmm. when there was that that ship that blocked the get canal blocked, and they couldn't get it moving, and every, all the prices fucking rose up, and it was like twenty billion trillion dollars worth of goods can of get through the Suez Canal, and that's why you can't get toilet paper, and that's why fucking vegetable oil is sixty thousand pound a litre. Right, you remember that? Uh huh. So apparently, one of the conspiracy theories is that they found fucking containers full of kids. They were going around checking containers. And they found containers on it full of children that were being trafficked. And that's why it was held. So it was a, a false beach to make it look as if it couldn't get past to find out what the fuck was going on. Because you, that way you're going, suddenly all this stuff that is full on farcical conspiracy, you start to go, no, take a step back. You, this could logically be true. They're saying in that the, the promo. Is technically a conspiracy until it's that, proven well, true or false. In, they're saying in the, the promo for <clears> it that. Apparently, the, the, the child, the global child trafficking industry is worth $34 billion. Air travel is worth $22 billion. So if you take all the profits from every single uh, plane company, every single travel company in the world, and put it together, it's $22 billion. 
that they make 34 billion from child trafficking. Now, where is here's the thing, man. We are not a job. What? We hope that you've enjoyed the episode. You can continue to listen to the podcast. Uh, if you become a hashtag hero, it's the only way to get every single minute of each episode uninterrupted. Because once we're finished recording the free section of the show, the podcast continues for up to an hour every single week. So to enjoy all of the content, become a hero. Hashtag show.co.uk for the links. Or go to patreon.com forward slash the hashtag show. That's patreon.com forward slash the hashtag show. That's correct, Scott. Um, change your ways, become a hero. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good